In this video, we're going to talk about the keyword this in C++. We'll talk about what it is, and we'll go over some examples of where we can use it. So the keyword this is used in non-static member functions. So non-static member functions basically have this implicit argument they can use called this. And I say implicit because we don't see it in the list of parameters, but it's there. And this is going to be a pointer to that instance of the object. So let's go over an example. We'll make a student class here, and it'll be a pretty simple class. We'll have two public member variables, a name and an age for the student. The name is a string, the age is an int. And here we'll make a constructor. We'll say student, and I'll say string set name and int set age. And in the constructor, we'll set the name to set name and the age to set age. Let's also try to output this. So here we'll say C out and we'll output the keyword this. We'll say this memory address colon and we'll output this followed by an end line. Now let's try to make a student object. So in the main function here, we'll say student student one, Lucas, and 20. And then here we're also gonna to try to output the memory address of student one. So we'll say C out student one memory address colon. And here we're gonna output the memory address of student one, followed by an end line. So we'll save this here now and we'll run it. And we get that this memory address is this address here. And the student one memory address is the exact same thing. So that's what the this keyword is. It's a pointer to this particular object instance for which this non-static member function is running. In this case, the constructor. So we can use this to access the object instance for which the non-static member function is actually running. So now that we have this pointer to the object instance itself, how can we use it? One of the ways we can use it is in a situation like this constructor, where we have parameters here that are really just name and age values. But I can't call them name and age right now because that's gonna be an error in terms of the expected behavior. We're gonna have a bug because we have member variables called name and age and then here I'm trying to use parameters with the exact same name. This won't work. What we could do though is say this arrow name and this arrow age. Now we're using the pointer to the object instance and we're accessing its member variable name. And now we're using the parameter name and we're assigning its value to that member variable. And we do the same thing with age here. So by using this, we're able to use the same name for these parameters as the object's member variables. So all of the non-static member functions are gonna have access to this. So for example, we can make another non-static member function here. We'll call it increase age. And it's gonna be a void function. So it has no return value. But what it is going to do is it's gonna increase the age. So we'll say this age is equal to this age plus one. And so this function also has access to this. It's kind of like an implicit argument that's given to all these non-static member functions and they've all just got it. The other thing we can do with this is we could use it to call one of the object's member functions. So we'll make another function here, void increase and output age. And this function is going to call the increase age member function using the pointer to the object instance, this. So we'll say this increase age, and then we'll output the age. We'll say age colon and output the age. So let's test this out now in the main function. Down here, we'll output Lucas's age by calling that function increase and output age. So if we save and run this, 
we should get an age of 21. And we do, because it was initially 20, and then we increase the output of the age, and we get 21 there. Another thing we can do with the this pointer is have the member function pass the this pointer as an argument to another function, basically passing a pointer to the object instance for which it was called to that function. So let's make a function that's going to work with a student object pointer. So we'll say void create report student star student. So create report is going to accept a pointer to a student object as an argument. Now for this to compile, we're going to have to say here class student. So that way this function declaration here is aware that there's going to be a student type that we're going to define later. We'll define the create report function now. And this function will use its pointer to the student object to output the student data. So we'll say C out and we'll output the student's name followed by a space followed by the student's age and then an end line. And now we can make a member function that will pass the this pointer to the create report function. So here we'll say void graduate. And when a student graduates, we'll output congratulations because they should get a congratulations when they graduate. But after that, we'll create a report for the student because that's probably a good time to create a report. So we'll call create report and we'll pass this. We'll pass a pointer to the object instance for which graduate was called. So down in the main function now, we'll try calling graduate. We'll say student one dot graduate. And if we save and run this, we get congratulations. And then we get the report on our student, which includes their name and their age. So we could also use the this keyword to help us implement method chaining. Where say for example, we want to set multiple member variables of the student object by using setter methods in a chain. So for example, we could say student one dot set name John and dot set age and then we'll say 23. And the idea is that after calling student one dot set name with John, this set name member function would actually return a reference to the student one object. And by doing that, by having set name return a reference to the student one object, we can actually call set age right after it with dot set age here, because it's going to be acting on a reference to student one. It's going to be acting on student one, and that's actually going to be okay. So to do this, we can use the this keyword to help us. So we'll say student and set name, string name, and we'll say this name is equal to name. So we'll set the member variable name of the object instance for which set name was called to the name argument that was provided. And then we're going to return star this. So the star operator is going to dereference the pointer. When used in conjunction with and here, which is going to signal that we're going to return a reference to a student object, what we're going to return is a reference to this student object. We can do the same thing with set age. So I'll copy and paste this, and we'll also make a set age setter function that will work with method chaining. So we'll say int age, age, and age. And now we're going to set the age member variable in the same way. So if we save and run this, we're going to cause student one's name to be set to John and their age to be set to 23. And we're using the this pointer to help us implement method chaining. So we can save and run this. And now when the student graduates, their name is John and they're 23 years old. 
And again, what's happening here is that when student1.setName is called, it's returning a reference to the student object for which it was called. That's why set age can pick up here with that student object and continue to work with it. So that's the this keyword in C++ and some potential use cases. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.